PVMNS version 1.3.0 introduces a new feature called Radio Link Test, or RTL. This feature allows you to test the throughput on the QuickBridge or MP820 units, except for the MP826 CPE50 radios. Uh, this is going to have to be running version 2.6.5 and higher. The RLT tool helps to measure and diagnose any wireless performance issues. This tool internally generates the traffic between two radios at the MAC layer. Due to this, there is no degradation in throughput when compared to the internal iPerf testing. The test report would also help in analyzing the wireless link performance and other related issues such as interference, low throughput, and wireless errors. The tool is especially helpful for checking the quality of the link when installing for the first time and can also be used if any performance issues are noticed after the installation. Now right, we're going to start off going over some points. Uh, first off, this particular feature is only applicable to the A20, A25 units. This is not currently available on the 8100 or the 8200 units. So basically what that means is that uh, you could have a combination between a uh, um, A20 base station to uh, A20, A25 subscriber or a quick bridge A25 to a quick bridge A25. This will not work if you have, let's just say, or MP8100 or 8250 or anything like that connected to a A20, A25 subscriber. They will link up, but this particular feature will not function just because the um, 8000 series is not supported at this time. This is not a replacement for other wireless performing measuring tools and should be used in conjunction with other tools such as iPerf or other commercial tools. A quick note on the internal iPerf to the Proxim Tsunami radios. Uh, you'll see about a 25 to 30% less throughput when running the same iperf test from ethernet to ethernet this is due to the internal processing power the internal iperf will use more cpu processes thus it's going to uh, make the speed lower by 25 to 30 percent it is recommended to use this tool with caution on a live network as it will generate internal traffic which may impact the network performance so the best thing to do is either create a maintenance window or uh, just be cautious that this may disrupt your traffic. Uh, this tool can be accessed through either the web interface, the console commands, or via CLI. Uh, those commands are going to be discussed later on. And both ends of the link cannot simultaneously run this test, so uh, just pick whichever one you, you want to do first because you are be able to do a bi-directional test um, and once again, that's something that's going to be covered later on as well. All right, so let's uh, look on how to start the actual RLT throughput test. Um, what I have here is a E20 uh, base station. Here's my subscriber. Okay, the way you access it is uh, right-click. Uh, you'll see two options, RLT at server or a client at server, would meaning um, it's going to be initiated from the PVMS server. A client will... Uh, indicate that it will be from the remote radio. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on server. Here's my radio. Click the radio link test button. It's going to ask you to first configure the remote radio. Okay, dot uh, 24. All right, here's my system name. Now it's going to ask you to select the modulation. Now this modulation is the same modulation as I have selected for my PV um, MNS uh, DDRS for my radios. Okay, now um, I could select whatever I want, all right, but this is what it's currently selected to. There's an option over here called revert changes. Um, what this indicates that if it's uh, checked, that means that I could set whatever speed I want here, but after the test is done, it's going to go ahead and go revert back to your original. DDRS settings. If it's unchecked, it's going to uh, set and stay with the new settings. Okay, 
Uh, after that's done, you could go ahead and set the modulation. In this case, we're going to stay at 78. All right, you're going to go ahead and click Next. And this is the screen that you're going to see. All right, we have uh, three options, bidirectional, uplink or downlink, and then you have Start. Okay. Uh, after the test is done, the log is going to display this information, uh, or the, the test information. Over here, we're going to see a graph. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do a bidirectional. We're going to click Start Now. This is going to kill your link, okay? So you have to be care careful of this. It is going to kill the link, as mentioned. Um, it takes about a minute or two, and so don't worry. Uh, there's no indicator or anything like that. Um, with the second that it's done, once again, it's going to show you a graph and it's going to show you a log over here, right? So let's go ahead and click start and see what happens. Okay, so um, basically this is what it's going to look like. Uh, like I said, here is a little graph and it's going to give you your e uh, UDP throughput, our downlink and our uplink, okay? And on the right side here, it's just going to give a quick report uh, the test duration, uh, the MTU speed, uh, bi-directional, things like that. Now, um, uh, most of these you could change, uh, the uplink, the downlink. Uh, you could change this uh, via CLI, and the information is uh, located within the reference manual uh, for the uh, 820 radios. Okay, so uh, basically the results are going to be fairly similar to the uh, built-in RLT that we covered in a previous serial. Uh, we have our downlink stats, okay, actually here's our throughput here for our UDP, here's our downlink stats, and here's our uplink stats, and then it's going to give us um, how many failures, um, how many uh, five CRC errors we're looking at, if the medium was busy, um, basically all of this are uh, signs of interference, now of course we have our antenna info, our signal, noise, SNR, and so on. All right, so uh, at the end, um, basically what we're looking at is the radio connected at 78, and we're coming fairly, you know, fairly close to about 60. So uh, it's give or take, it's pretty much right where it's supposed to be. I do have uh, interference, and I also have some um, uh, RF issues because of just the way that my radios are configured. So. But what you're kind of looking at is this very kind of in-your-face type, simple information. And it's just, once again, quick and dirty um, it, to provide you the throughput of the radios. Um, definitely want to rely on something more like iPerf uh, or other third-party throughput uh, testing utilities. To learn more about Proxim Wireless and our solutions, please visit us at Proxim.com or follow us at Twitter at Proxim.